Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So behind me I got a Chevy Cruze and it's in the shop today for a cooling leak. I've already gone ahead and diagnosed it and apparently the radiator uh, tank or surge tank as Chevy calls them is uh, what's leaking. Apparently it has cracked up or has pinholes in it. Uh, so we're going to be replacing that today. Now before we go ahead and begin guys, make sure that if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Smash that like button because it definitely helps the channel out. And with that said, let's go ahead and tear into this car and get some repairs done. Today I've had it running, I let the car cool down um, and I did my pressure test, I wasn't getting any leaks or anything and then what I decided to do was go ahead and start the car up, warm it up and do my pressure testing and then I was able to trace my leak back to the coolant tank. It is such a fine leak that it's very hard to tell guys. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pump it up and see if we can make it leak again because the engine has cooled down quite a bit since last time. Um, let me see here. So right now it's not really streaming out and I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but I'm going to try to get you guys zoomed in there. But you can see right there, it's leaking. It was actually shooting out of the bottom of the tank previously, but now that the car's cooled down, the plastic is more relaxed and just has a little bitty leak as you see right there. Um, so all in all, it's going to be getting a coolant reservoir tank, which is this guy right here. Chevy calls these surge tanks, so if you go buy this at a dealer and they ask you, do you want to replace the surge tank, is that what you're looking for? Say yes, because for some reason that's what they're called, even though it's just a coolant reservoir. But either way, uh, let me go ahead and get my coolant pressure tester off and uh, my lighting and everything out of here. I'm going to grab some tools and I'll show you guys how to replace the surge tank. So I have you guys positioned at our reservoir. This is probably the best angle that I can get, guys. Um, first thing that you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and take off your radiator cap. And if you have any coolant left in here, like I do, because I had to add some coolant uh, to be able to test this, you're gonna wanna go ahead and take it out. Now, I'm going to use my extractor. I got an air extractor in the shop. It's uh, good for jobs like this. It's just gonna suck out all the coolant. As you guys can see right there, co uh, coolant is flowing through my hose. And I'm going to make sure I get all of it out, get it in varying angles, and I believe that should cover it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take our suction tool out of the way. And if uh, you guys are curious as to what my suction tool is, I'll give you guys a quick glimpse. I use this tank right here. It's a John Doe uh, evacuator. It's used for oil changes and everything, and it's a really good tool. I'll probably wind up doing a review on it one of these days. Um, so now that we have our fluid out of there, what we're going to be doing is removing our hose clamps uh, from our hoses. I got to reposition you guys for that, uh, and uh, I'll show you guys how to remove them. I have you guys positioned in the tank area. Uh, you will see we have our lower hose and our upper hose. What I'm going to do is grab a pair of pinching pliers like this, and I'm going to try to pinch off our lower hose simply because I don't want to lose all the coolant out of the system if in case uh, it does decide to uh, all come out. Uh, I don't want to sit there and have to charge the customer for a whole coolant fill and this and that. So now I'm going to take my special pliers that I have. Uh, these have these cutouts that will help remove uh, these little clamps and they come off fairly easy. And then what I do is wiggle them to break off any sort of stiction. Now we're going to go ahead and take our hose. Now some coolant may dribble out of this. Um, just push it off to the side. Uh, then what we're going to do is come here on this bottom hose and same thing guys we're just going to remove this clamp now this hose is fighting me a little bit um, and the clamp is not even wanting to move so let me see if I could pull the whole hose out of here with everything and I was able to get our hose off now there is a little bit of coolant left uh, because the way the reservoir is built on these uh, there's no way you're going to be able to get all of the coolant out of it uh, I went ahead and put my lower hose out of the way. Uh, I don't know if you guys see it. It's right. Oh, actually, it's out of angle, so you won't be able to see it. But either way, now that we have our coolant tank disconnected, we need to go ahead and remove it. Now, these are actually held in very simply. They're not even bolted in. It's just like a, a peg with a clip type of style. Let me go ahead and reposition the camera, guys, and I'll show you how we remove the tank. So I have you guys positioned at our tank here. Let me slide you guys a little up for a better view. This is how the tank mounts right here. It's a clip style. What you have to do and what I like to do is take a little hook tool. You can also take a flathead screwdriver to it. 
but I find this tool uh, is just easier to get in there. And you're going to want to lift up on it and then simply slide the clip off. Um, you can see it's just like a wedger. It just wedges everything into place. That's how it holds in there. Uh, one thing you want to pay attention to is how you remove it. You can see it has a curvature to it and it kind of goes up there like an S-bend. This is actually going to be facing outward. Uh, be mindful of that because otherwise you could probably clip it on and you know, you're not going to wind up help holding it in place very well. And then what we're going to do is start working our tank off. All right, guys, so I have you guys positioned up front now. You kind of want to be up to this side. This is how you get it off. What you're going to do is uh, slide it up forward like this, and you should be able to release it. Uh, the battery wiring and stuff may be in the way, and that's how you get it off. Uh, the reason why you got to slide it forward is you see this little tab here. It goes into a square cutout and it has to slide back a little bit to allow everything else to mount up in there. Uh, that's why she is fighting us or was fighting us. Now go ahead and take the old cap and put it on your tank. The one that we bought for this vehicle uh, comes with a new cap and everything. Um, I was originally going to use the GM one. I called the dealer and I ordered it. Uh, they actually just called me. It's been a couple hours, guys. I just kind of paused the video. But uh, they called me back saying they didn't have it in stock. And uh, the only one that I could source right now is an aftermarket tank. Uh, this one's a lot cheaper. Uh, as far as build quality, to be honest with you, whether you get the original GM one or an aftermarket one, they're all plastic. They all leak. Um, this one here is a doorman unit. Uh, sometimes I have to wind up using doorman. Uh, it could be hit or miss with doorman from my experience, guys, because uh, this tank could be either better and more improved than the GM one, or it just may be about the same quality or, you know, give or take. So uh, what we're going to do is take our tank, and we're going to go ahead and put it in at an angle, again, trying to line up our square area here. Now, once you line that up, you're going to go ahead and slide the tank backwards. Um, let me see if I can do it here. The clip can be a little difficult down there, so just kind of give it a push back as you pull up and wiggle it in there. Now, one thing you will notice, and I will uh, get you guys zoomed back here where you were previously, is that uh, my tank has lined up. Make sure you line up. You should have this little cutout that will line up with the little tab. You see it's like a C-channel cutout. Make sure you uh, go all the way up to that because uh, that is a stopping point. Once you have that lined up, we're going to take our clip. Remember the S-Bend side facing out. And I should be able to just go ahead and push it in just like that. And that's as sturdy as this tank is ever going to be. Uh, they don't use anything else to hold it down, but it has three points of hold down. You got the bottom end, you got this clip, and then has a little finger on the side where it kind of slides into the strut tower as uh, just a guide, but that'll also hold it up as well. Now that we have our tank installed, uh, what we're going to do is go back on the other side and reinstall our lines. So I have you guys into position on the side of the tank. What we're going to do is go ahead and grab our lower hose. And we are going to position it in our new tank. And then we're going to be using our pliers here. And grab onto our clamp and line it back up and lock it down. And then we're going to take our upper line, install it in there as well. And then we just reinstall our... Uh, clamp here just like that uh, so as you guys can see it's nothing to it it's very easy uh, two connections one clip and just you know pop it out of there uh, real simple real easy to get to uh, now what we're gonna do is go ahead and fill this thing up with some coolant uh, just to give you guys a FYI the customer uh, had to throw coolant in this car so they went ahead and threw I believe it was the universal Prestone um, I'm not going to be adding that. I'm actually going to be draining the cooling system out of it. And we're going to be refilling it with DexCool. So I'm going to go ahead and drain most of it out. Uh, I'm not really going to be covering that portion of it. Uh, it's real simple. Just remove the lower radiator hose and get out as much as you can. And then we're going to be able to refill it. One thing to take away from this. If you guys didn't drain your system and all you had to do was replace your tank uh, you don't need to do a coolant bleed or anything i would still suggest it and recommend you running the engine without the cap and try to bleed it a little bit regardless of that fact in my case i will be bleeding out my entire system 
but you don't necessarily have to do that just for the tank if your tank just simply had a crack because what I find is you're probably not going to have air in the system but I would still just run a quick coolant bleed about let's say 15 to 30 minutes where you leave the car running without the cap on and just let it aerate and get any air bubbles out. Um, I've already gone ahead and drained all my coolant on this. I'm going to go ahead and take my clamp that I was using to block off my hose and get that out of the way uh, because now we are going to be refilling it. Um, what you're going to want to do, and it's quite simple guys, I'm going to do it off camera, is uh, take your uh, antifreeze and go ahead and throw it in there. Now even though the customer threw Prestone in there, um, we are going to be throwing Prestone uh, in there as well. Uh, this is the one that is made for this vehicle. Uh, this one takes the orange Dex cool. Um, even though I'm pretty sure the other one is the same, I just don't like intermixing them so I always drain them out and just try to get one coolant in there. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up my system now and once I have that all done I'll bring you guys back. We went ahead and we got our coolant filled up to the top line. Now we're going to be bleeding out our system. Um, I'm not going to be showing or covering that. I've covered that in other videos. It's pretty uh, easy to do, guys. But just to give you a quick rundown, you're going to want to have your heater inside of the car on heat mode. And you're going to have to have the fan on low or off. Uh, you're going to fill up your system to your max line. And then you're going to start your engine. You're going to let it run until your coolant fan, which would be this guy right here, uh, starts kicking on and off. Now I like to do about four to five fan cycles where the fan turns on four or five times. Uh, that ensures you get all the air out because what happens when the fan kicks on, it means the thermostat is opened up and the coolant has gone in a loop. And that means any air that would be trapped behind the thermostat has come out and been pushed out of the tank or wherever you're bleeding it from. Uh, one thing to note as the air escapes, this coolant level will drop so you will have to uh, add coolant to it. Sometimes on these Chevys when you're bleeding them out, they do have uh, some coolant that will kind of pop up and overboil and spill out. So be careful, uh, do it at your own risk. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start the car, let it run for about 45 minutes to an hour, bleed out our coolant and I'll bring you guys back in. All right, guys, so it's been about 45 minutes. I ran the car. Everything was great. Uh, all of the air bled out. We did have a little bit of spillover. I had to clean off my areas uh, with a little bit of air pressure. And I will probably be uh, rinsing down this engine just because there's some coolant all over it. And uh, I don't want to ship it out that way and have the customer think they possibly have another leak down the road. Uh, so we are all said and done. Uh, no other leaks. We did pressure test it as well. Uh, just to kind of give you guys an idea on pressure testing, you will need a specialty tool. And uh, what it consists of is an adapter like this that you simply screw on here. Uh, you guys saw this earlier in the video and I have covered this in another video as well. Then you're going to take your pump and what you simply do is go ahead, put it on there, lock it up and then pump away uh, until you get to a certain amount and then you let it sit and you watch out for any leaks. Uh, now what I'm going to go ahead and do uh, is uh, take off my pressure tester because I just wanted to show you guys an example. I'm going to reinstall my coolant cap, clean off my engine bay and then this car is all set and it is ready to ship out. All right, guys, so we are all said and done. It's quick, simple, and easy to replace this uh, reservoir or surge tank, as Chevy calls it. As you guys see, uh, it was really simple. Uh, this repair, all in all, honestly, to replace a tank takes about 10, 15 minutes if you got the correct tools. It's quick and easy. The longer portion of this is bleeding out the coolant. That's what takes the longest. So with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. It definitely helps the channel grow. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.